Holman's calling card. And that's one cashed in dog. Maybe the boy'd feel better if I took a look. Dog, you dare. Dog, you die. <laughs> I've been thinking. You know, somebody ought to tell Mr. Pinchot that when he's on Sheridan Street, he shouldn't act like he's on Gold Street or people won't like him. Oh, I'll tell him. I'm very fond of Ed Pinchot. We had a perfectly divine dance last night, except he didn't take off his shoulder holster. Take off his holster in Sheridan? Oh, I guess he'd be safe these days. Dade Holman's painted the town bright yellow. Well, it could be worse. Mr. Pinchot usually shoots people. Well, what did I say this time? Really, Anne? Shoulder holster? Yeah. Come in. Get on the loose shoe as soon as I mend the doc's rig. He needs it for sick calls. I'll mend my horse if I can borrow your layout. Riding through? Yeah, as soon as I take care of a little personal business. Ooh. Thanks. How about that? Middle of Sheridan Street, the gun blast didn't even rouse the marshal out of his seat. Sims get head up about a dead dog. He ain't head up about the miner who died sudden at the palace last night. Now, Saul, we can't afford to worry about Gold Street doing this. But when Holman's gun slicks gets careless on this side of town... Trouble's outside of town today. Holman's fixing for a busy one when he bars the palace, boys. Now, everybody round about's heard that gun shot. They don't know it's just a dog. It ain't even noon. And business goes apart for the day. What's on the house? Where will I find Nellie Bain's place? Nellie Bain? Corner of Sheridan and Gold. Entrance on Gold. But don't let that fool you. It ain't an entrance. Nobody, no man anyhow, gets past Nellie. If you want to wait till night, you can see her girls at the palace. When do you expect her? She won't be home all day. All right, give her a message for me. You tell her that Clint Tollinger is riding through. Tell her he wants to ask her just one question before he moves on. You tell her right now, I'll wait. I can't do it. She's already told me. Duck, so 
I'm entitled to theories, and I got one now. I got a theory that sudden death is catching. Tollinger! Well, if you haven't got it yet, maybe you never will. No, you wouldn't remember me. But I'm not likely to forget you. No one who lived in Ponca, who lived through Ponca, is going to forget you in a hurry. Doc Hughes. Tollinger? Might call him a town doctor, too. Ponca was a mighty sick town. Clint operated on it. Patient lost a lot of blood, but lived. Town tamer. Hmm? Where are you heading? Not here. I never could sleep in the saddle. Board my horse? My business. Mostly western my line of work, Doc. Well, law and order ain't caught up yet, huh? We're mighty far west, seems to me. Did. Oh, Atkins here is president of the town council. It's his job to worry. We're not that far west. That's so. Well, I'm checking into the hotel down here for a couple of days. That'll give you time to decide just how far west you are. I'll see you, Doc. Sal, I know what you're thinking, but don't. I don't believe in operating until you've tried all the cures. We're not that bad off yet. Aren't we? Always dresses in gray. Black would fit his profession better. There's no guns unless we have to. You reckon Castle saw us coming and lit out? Let's get a fire started. You want the next one between your eyes? Tell Dade Holman I'm building here, and if he bothers me again, I'll personal put a bullet through his fat carcass. got himself 12 top gun hands out of his place, not counting the boys he's got here at the palace. That's just too many to fight, boy. And should I at any time rile them up, they can ride in here and wipe this town right off the map. Now, so leave them the facts. Heard you say so often enough. There's more than one way to wipe a town off the map. A town has got to eat if it's going to grow, but Dave doesn't want farms cluttering up his grass. Look out there. It smells like a ghost town already. Son. When you get a little older, you'll realize there's certain things that's best left alone. And by and by, they just take care of themselves. Leave Holman alone and he'll swallow us up. He's done swallowed and digested the whole lot of you already. <laughs> Long before I come to town, Dave's a power in the county. And he's getting to be a power in the state. And now, you want to cut him down to size. Yes, now. Brooks and hold your horses, will you? Dade is old and he's fat and he's got himself a bum ticker. And one of these days he'll just pop off just like that. Then that'll be the time to go. Son, quit it, will you? You're digging holes in my desktop again. That land is mine, legal. Dade needs to be told that legal. 
But if you won't do it, put a star on me and I'll tell them quick enough. I ain't deputizing you no other darn fighting fool that wants to go out and get himself killed. It's all you with me. I'm not waiting till Dade dies to live on my own property. I, son. Yeah. How did you hear that? I heard. Look, before you and Stella set the wedding date, I might have felt different about you declaring war on Holman. But now, boy. It's too late, Saul. I caught his boys red-handed today trying to set a fire. Well, I shot him off my home site, and I'm going to keep him off. Saul, step into my office a minute, will you? Maybe you and me. No, Lee, we can't. Tell her I'm here. Miss Bain... She's home. You see that? That's my foot. It's too big to close the door on. Now you tell her. Hello, Nelly. Your girls, I understand. And you're the girl who was brought up to think that dancing was a sin. Uh, you've come a long way now, but then it is a long way from home, isn't it? I thought so. But you're still in business, I see, so you found it. I might have known. The town's rotten ripe. Is that why you picked it? Now I'm here on personal business. I got your message. Just the one question. It's been three years. You don't expect an answer. It's been three years, and I do. Leave us alone, Clint. I'm warning you. As soon as I get my answer. You won't for me. Be kind, just this once. Forget us. Right away and let me forget you're still alive. Beth is five now. Where is she? Almost like you could reach out and touch the snow. It looks like a lake I once saw up in the Sawtooth Mountains. You no, know, Jeff, I thought of a mountain lake for our honeymoon. Not in the Sawtooths. No one around for hundreds of miles. No? No, I could always fish, but what would you do? Fish? Sometimes, Jefferson Castle, I wonder about you. Company. Mr. Tollinger, this is my daughter, Stella. And this young man ain't a member of the family yet, but he's the next thing to it. Jeff Castle, who had the trouble today. Pleased to meet what you. trouble? Jeff, you didn't Coleman tell... tried to burn him out, but I got an idea. First, I have to sell it to the council at the regular meeting Friday. But if I can't swing it, I'll pay you for your time. Clint Tollinger? That's my risk. I always try to make sure that a town needs doing and a town wants doing. We need it, all right. You figure you can tidy up a town single-handed, Mr. Tollinger? With a little luck. Yeah. He's been 100% lucky. And when it adds up like that, it ain't luck. Call it timing. I just work faster alone. Well, then you're not a marshal or a sheriff. He's a town tamer. The difference is there are no rules on my end of the business, except maybe one. Never stay in one town too long. Well, you can clean up for the rest of the town. I believe in doing my own fighting. Look, that won't be necessary. If Mr. Tollinger does the job, it'll go fast like he says. If you'll just hold up... I'm not to... holding up for anybody. Not for Holman or Sims or anybody. How about thinking of Stella? I am thinking of Stella. It's our home site and I'm building on it so we'll have some place to live when we get married. Mr. Tollinger, I must say you don't look fierce enough to fight everyone's battles. I'm a peacemaker by profession, Miss Atkins. Let's get you some dinner. You haven't met my wife yet. Oh, Mary? So... You're late tonight. Mary, this is Mr. Tollinger, and he's hungry. Oh. Oh, this way, Mr. Tollinger. Those guns. 
all that talk about fighting. And what happened to you today? I'm scared. Honey, you can't keep on turning the other cheek with a cemetery as big as we've got. But to pay someone to stand up like a man for you. You understand, don't you? I don't know. Look, it's like this. I've got to do my own fighting. To get into training to be head of my family. Don't I know? Good night, honey. Good night. Boy's gonna take some handling, but I figured. Jack. Here he is. His left shoulder—it's bleeding. Get Doc Hughes. Well, town needs it. They'll find out they want it in a hurry. 14 killings and 31 robberies in the past year. Most of them in or around the palace. That's how things have quieted down for us. Call that spade a spade, Saul. You're talking Tollinger, you're talking gun law. What have we got now? Only it's Holman's guns and Holman's law. People are scared to build. They're scared to farm. They're even scared off the streets. You know how I feel about young Castle getting shot up, Saul, but Tollinger? I heard about a town he cleaned up right smart, only a lot of businesses closed down until the smoke blew away and never did open up. If my business closed down, I wouldn't know the difference. $500 is a lot of money to pay for a cleanup job, but it ain't too much to pay a tamer willing to take all the chances. Arthur? One gun against Holman's army? <laughs> They'll take him fast. Then Dade will work his grudge off on the rest of us. I say if Gold Street Riff Raff want to kill each other off, let them in good riddance. Things have quieted down lately for us. Till tonight. Ten years ago, there were a dozen farms and three mining operations in the valley. Now there's just Dade Holman. He's got the valley. He's got us backed up here in town. Now he's working on the town. He already owns Gold Street. What happens when he decides to take over Sheridan Street? He'll take it over. Can anyone here deny that? Unless... Are you sure Clint Tollinger is available? I'm sure. Is Tollinger the cure for what's ailing us? As a doctor, I've seen some cures worse than the disease. Believe me, his medicine is hard to take and harder to keep down. Come in. There's a fire out in the prairie a ways. It ain't grass neither. Is young Jeff Castle's new house gone up in a puff of smoke? Well, if that don't just about... What are you gonna do about it? Well, I... I could deputize every man Jackie of a war on Holman, just like young Castle wanted. All over a pile of lumber. Is that what you want? All at me. Gentlemen, I'm putting the proposition to a vote. Namely, to employ Clint Tollinger in the capacity of town tamer. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion is carried unanimous. <laughs> Gentlemen, meet Clint Tollinger. Challenger, I guess you wouldn't mind a little friendly advice from a member of the town council. What I mean is, we don't want you to go hog wild on this. I mean, just take it a little easy. Too much gunplay is bad for business. What you mean is that uh, target practice in the hallways is against the house rules, huh? Huh? Oh, I see. Uh, having your little joke, huh? <laughs> Oh, hello, Tully. 
Bollinger. Just uh, looking around a bit before you uh, start the work? No, I'm ready. Ever been to Sheridan before? No, but all these towns look alike to me. So do the people. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you you never seen one look like Dade Holman before. Lay odds, you never get a chance to see him. Saul Atkins tells me you know the terms. You'll draw up a contract in letter form. There's a clause I'd like in that contract. Yeah? No interference. I'll do the job my own way. You've deputized me, and that's all. If I need your help, I'll let you know. Well, town council look you on. I'm just a hired hand here myself. You're on your own, Tollinger. What's Holman's brand? Lazy Tombstone. Who ramrods for him? Pincho, Ed Pincho. Know him? Yeah, I've heard he's overdue. He's wanted down in Texas for murder and rustling, and in Abilene, Kansas, for playing murder. Then there's uh, Frenchy Lesko. When they opened the palace, he brung Lesko all the way up from New Orleans, I believe it was, to run it for him. <laughs> Two of a kind. Lesko can kill playing a fancy, but he's partial to a boy knife. Fact of the matter is, last marshal died of a knife wound. He got over the palace checking up on a knife killing there the night before. But let's go, Clay. Tell me an old Holman. No name calling, just how does he operate? Well, Dade's a fat man. But don't let that fool you. Never lifts a pudgy finger himself. Now, you, you take yesterday, for example, just a typical day in Dade's life. He cut himself a piece out of a trail herd that was passing through. Then he roughed up the new mine workings of a better creek way. Then he tried to grab young Jeff Castle's home site. And I'm betting you he divvied up the gold dust that took off that poor dead miner over there at the palace. <laughs> Nothing's too small and mean for Dade. Nothing's so rich nor fancy, neither. <laughs> Grand Piani from Italy. Yeah, fish eggs from Rushi and a brocade Sophie from New York. Did he bring in Nellie Bain? Nellie? Oh, no. No, not that one. Nellie come on her own steam, stays on her own terms. Of course, her girls work over at the palace, but nobody owns Nellie. Now, uh, don't you tell them church biddies I said so, but Nellie is quite a female. Ain't no lady, of course. But if some of the men in this town stood up the Dade's boys the way Nellie does and got away with it... Town never stood up before, huh? No, no. Believe you me, mister, it, uh, <clears throat> it ain't no one-man job, neither. Man, it's... It's too late now. Well, I gotta start sometime. How? You can't get that deed. He sits out there in that ranch of his like a big fat spider, I tell you. He ain't been to town the last four or five years. And we'll take an army to get through them gun hands of his'n. Well, we'll have to get him to town. Get him how? I'll work on that. I'll take that oath now. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Tollinger. Miss Atkins, I just stopped by to ask, how's the patient? Much better, thank you. Doc Hughes says he can't be moved. <laughs> that suits me just fine. Mother's with him while he's taking a nap. While I try to figure out Father's bookkeeping. I don't know what the council's gonna do for its book work when Stella and Jeff get married. When? Seems so soon, but now. Maybe you can tell me something, Mr. Tollinger. After all, it's what you call your business. Would they have tried to kill Jeff if he hadn't shot at them yesterday? I knew a man once didn't own a gun. Wouldn't have one in the house. One day those land grabbers back in Lottawana County came to pay him a call. He sent his kid out to hide in the brush before he'd opened the door. They shot him where he stood and they burned the house down around him. Jeff Castle just made one mistake. What? He didn't shoot to kill. Oh, it is getting late, and I want to be home when Jeff wakes up. on the house, Mr. Tollinger. 
My first drink on a working day is my last one. Can't afford to drink on the house. Any of Dade Holman's boys in town? We work for Dade Holman. Who's asking? Well, look what we got here. A new deputy with a long memory. Fred and Cy Harkness. You ran with Big Bill Thompson down south, wiped out the Circle B Ranch to a man. Last year, you killed a bank teller down in Texas. I hear there's a price on your head in Texas. That's in Texas. Well, this is Sheridan, where I'm giving you exactly 10 minutes to get out of town and don't come back. Don't ever come back. Why, you tin horn. Move. He'll never save a cent. How will they see the forest for the trees? Huh? You're going to do Mabel's song tonight. She's nursing a sore throat. But I haven't got any voice. And that's the worst kind. You're not paying for your pear-shaped tones at the palace, dear. Nellie means, who listens? Well, honestly, Nellie, half the time I don't know what you're talking about. Well, try a little harder because I have something to say to all of you. I'm warning you again not to let your escorts any further than the veranda steps when they walk you home. The ladies in this town are just waiting for a reason to force us to leave. I'm going to keep them waiting as long as the palace pays as well as it does. Oh, honestly, Nellie, the way you talk, sometimes you'd think we'd never left home. You notice I don't say anything about your manners. Appearances are all I care about. You're pretty girls, and the palace is not a pretty business. And? Whose husband were you flirting with today? Well, nobody's. I mean, well, that is, at least he's new and not one of the old tired ones. New and attractive, obviously. Oh, yes. But you know, I think he's some kind of a lawman, because he had a big star right here, and he was all dressed in gray. What did I do now? Anne, you should realize by now that you should never flirt with a man wearing a badge. Especially that man. And from now on, any rule I give you has nothing to do with manners or appearances. It's to keep you out of the way of stray bullets. I'd like to talk to him. A beauty, eh? I brought her all the way from New Orleans with me. One with a stack of poker chips. Two thousand dollars worth. Fancy. What can I do for you, Mr. Tallinger? Word gets around. Then you may have heard that I told the Harkness brothers to get out of town. You may have even heard that I never warn a man twice. The Harkness brothers? Well, they're at the Red Dog because you've got things all figured out. I'm here with a warning for you, Lesko. Starting now, there will be no wearing of weapons within town limits. I'm prepared to shoot any man who violates that rule. You think you can make a crazy rule like that stick in my place? Your place? I thought this was Holman's place, except maybe for this. Your uh, Bowie knife is a weapon, I'll take that. You tell Holman he can pick up the Harknesses any time he wants to ride in town after them. Yeah, 
Martinez brothers in jail, eh? That ought to get action out of Dade Holman in a hurry. Sir, whiskey. All the best brands. Never touch it myself. Are uh, you staying at the hotel? Oh, to be sure, to be sure. I expect to be spending quite some time in your delightful little town. Good. Quite some time. Just what all he considers a weapon. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Tollinger. Good morning, Mr. Atkins. Quiet today. Looks like some places ain't gonna open up at all. I guess Bird thinks the town's in for trouble. Might get worse before it gets better. Might get worse fast. Say, church festival coming up a week from Saturday. Mary says to get you there and no excuses. Ain't that right? We hope you'll be there. A week from Saturday? That's kind of far off to be making plans in my business. But I'll be there. He don't keep me posted, really. Collinger! Collinger! Come out from where you're hiding, Collinger. You're looking for me? You and you, drop those gun belts. You drop your gun. Downright foolish to slam to try to draw again you, Tollinger. We maybe got a little off on the wrong foot. We're going back home now, and we won't come to town no more carrying our guns. 
Reckon that's what you want, ain't it? Yeah, that's what I want. Now, you take Slim and bury him out on the prairie. Doesn't look nice for a town as small as Sheridan to have a graveyard as big as we got. Why, well, sure, Tollinger. We'll give Slim a real good send-off. Sure hot today, ain't it? You just tie Slim onto his horse and get on with it, I... Now get out of town. Take it dead with you. been a lazy tombstone rider in town since Reedy is killed last week. Nobody else, neither. Business was bad enough before, but it's worse now. It's the quiet I don't like. If you ask me, Tollinger don't like it either. He don't care how much blood he spills just so something's happening. Time's on Holman's side, and Tollinger knows it. Five sharp each day he comes in here for his one drink. You can set your clock by him. He don't like to drink with no one, so I keep the end of the bar for him. Wouldn't hurt my feelings none if he took his business somewhere else. Oh, oh how nice. Thank you very much. Quite a hand with the ladies. So is Samson. So is Samson. How are you doing, Mr. Dullinger? Things quieter down enough to suit you? You lost your way, let's go. Oh, no. I know my way around Sheridan. I venture to say I could tell you a lot of things nobody else has bothered to tell you. That Dave Holman is a reasonable man, for instance, and willing to listen to reason from you if you feel like riding out for a little talk. Safe conduct if you are worried. Anytime he feels like riding in, I'll feel like talking to him. Well, by the way, Lisko, I've decided the town needs a curfew. All places of business will close tight at midnight, starting tonight. What are you trying to do, put me out of business? I thought we settled all that. It's Holman's business, why not let him worry about it? Five o'clock sharp. Allowed time for interruptions. Man of prompt habits. Mm hmm. Prompt habits. Run along, run along. Oh, not apple pie. I do want you to try some of my green tomato pie. Green tomato pie? How did you know, Mrs. Elderhorn? Oh, well, some of the ladies have delegated me to congratulate you, Mr. Tollinger, on the splendid work you're doing driving the riffraff out of Sheridan. Oh, I know you'll like this pie. There's just one element that hasn't been touched yet. The women that sing and dance and carry on so shamelessly at the palace. Not one of them has left town. They sing and dance? What else? Well, they uh, carry on. I think you'll find, Mrs. Elderhorn, that the dance hall girls leave of their own accord when things slow down. Oh, you don't know Nellie Bain, Mr. Tollinger. Don't I? Now, don't you be fooled like some of the ones I can name around here. Oh, the air she puts on. I dare say it takes a woman to know she's no lady. And you're all woman, Mrs. Elderhorn. Oh, glad you got here. Come see you here. Well, it's good to see you up and about. I'll up anyway. Not that I'm going to be much use on the dance floor. Don't you worry. Somebody will take pity on you sooner or later. Sheridan only has two dances a year, and she loves to Chair. dance. 
He used it as an excuse to get out of bed. Maybe she'll take pity on me. I'll just sit here with Jeff, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Tollinger. You know you can't sit still when the music's playing out. to enjoy dancing, Mr. Tollinger. Maybe you're human after all. First, I wondered if you were fierce enough for the job, remember? And then after... Well, I just wondered. I'm human. Thank you, Miss Atkins. Seems you're a man of your word, Mr. Tallinger. They tell me it's a different town since you took over. No, it's the same town. The real work is still to be done. That's so? I don't want to interfere with that time schedule you were talking about, but I aim to start working on my home site and make up for lost time. I'd like you to wait a little longer. Why? Well, the choice of battlefield is important. I'd like to try to keep it out of Holman's territory. It's my home site. In his territory. Are you forbidding me to go ahead? Yes, I am. That doesn't mean I'll stop you. That means you go ahead on your own risk. Fine. I've never asked for your help. Well, you're right, of course. Only you shouldn't have told him off in front of Stella when he's trying to prove to her that he's a man now. Not the kid she grew up with. He chose the time, the place, and the audience. Kind of a big audience for plans like that. Good night, Saul. So. You know why I'm still here. The longer you keep putting it off, the more I want an answer. How is Beth? I took her to my family in Toledo. I know that. I asked, how is she? If you know that and cared enough to find out, you could have followed us. The idea was to take her too far away to follow, wasn't it? Would any place have been too far if you'd wanted to? Follow you? Why? To ask you to come back to something you hated enough to make you run the way you ran? I couldn't wait to say goodbye. If I had, I... I wouldn't have gone. It wasn't you that I hated. You believe that, Clint, don't you? I wanted to see Beth. I just thought she might be safer, that she'd be safe there. She is. Safe from you and from me. And that's your answer. One more thing. Business this time, since you're a businesswoman now. Curfew means your girls, too. It's 11.15 now. Don't worry, Clint. They'll be in by 12. I know what happens in a Tollinger tamed town. So we'll be moving farther west soon. Any suggestions? Where you won't be? please. Must be pretty important for you to risk the gossip. There was nobody downstairs. I knew where to find you because I've seen you sometimes at the window. It is important. This morning when we woke up, Jeff was gone. Dad's gone to the lumberyard to see if he's really going to do what he threatened. 
And I came to tell you. You're that worried, huh? Yes. Well, I know he can take care of himself any other time, but he's not strong enough yet. Well, he may be lucky today. You don't really believe that. No. Then what are you going to do? Nothing. I warned him. I thought I made it pretty clear. Yes, but if you warn a child and he does something foolish anyway, you, you try to stop him from getting hurt. Oh, I see. You think he's still a child, huh? Partly. Well, I think he's a man. He might be a little young and bullheaded about some things, but if there were more like him around, I might not be here. Come, Sergeant. Stella, this wasn't necessary. Time is so important. You didn't find him? He picked up a load of lumber an hour ago. I don't think Mr. Tollinger's interested. I'm not going after Jeff. I guess you have your reasons. I'll go. No. I just don't think they're interested in killing Jeff today. You don't? And you were there when they shot him? When I took this job, we signed an agreement. No interference. We'll do it your way. His way? You mean do nothing at all. They've uh, always sort of looked after each other. Well, that might make the waiting a little harder. You know what you remind me of? No offense, men of course. You remind me of a hungry lion I once seen pace in a cage in St. Louis. I'm hiding out. You from what? Questions. Well, I can't answer. <laughs> they want action from somebody else. Caught Jeff Castle trespassing on Holman's property again. Dade's keeping him for you out at the place. You can pick him up anytime you want. I don't recall issuing any trespass warrants. Do you, Lee? No. You arresting people these days without a warrant? We're not going to let something like that stop us, are we? The boy's all right, not a scratch on him. <laughs> and that took some doing. We got a few to show. No threats, no trouble, no nothing. Just an offer. Come and get him. I don't see your white flag. Huh? Now, if you were flying one, we might observe the rules of war. You're not, so we'll abide by the town law. If you've got something on your mind, Helen, just say it. Mr. Sims, keep an eye on that young man, will you? The law is no guns in town. You've broken it. That makes it legal and proper to arrest you. All right, dismount. Mount. Mr. Sims, make out a warrant for these gentlemen while I detain them. Tell you what, I'll make those out. You go on over to the palace and tell them to score to get a message to Holman right away. Tell them I'll exchange two hostages for one. Two unscratched hostages for one in the same condition. Four. Good to see them fellows behind bars. First time ever I've seen any of Dade's boys where they really belong. Hope he leaves them cool their heels there for a couple of days anyway. Well, if he does, we've lost this hand. Mm. Uh-oh. 
I know. It's three hours already. And now it's Trotter. It's about time he comes to pay his respects. I'll wait. Tollinger, I, uh, we'd like you to answer a few questions. Now, no one will say Ed Pincho ain't richly deserving of what he got, but... Will it get Jeff Castle back? I don't know yet. Two gunslicks come a-riding into town. High and mighty. Bearing arms. Detaining people without a warrant. And now you're asking why Clint and me put them under arrest? What do you want anyway? I'll tell you what we don't want. I ain't the only one heard what you said about choosing the battlefield. We don't want Dade marching into town with his gun army and wiping us out. You don't have to worry. He gets a big part of his revenue from the palace. That's bad business, wiping out the paying customers. You're paid to protect our people and our property, but you won't go after Jeff Castle. And putting Pincho behind bars is just inviting home and the command from and tear this town apart. Now, suppose you stop telling me what you don't want. You want me to turn Pincho loose and ride out and bargain with Holman's guns for Castle's release? Will you guarantee the result? No? Well, then, if you'll excuse me, I'll get on with other business. Now, Miss Atkins? You've already answered my questions. Only I'm worried about Jeff, not the town. Dad said I shouldn't have come. the exchange. Are you in good condition? Yes. All right, we'll return them in good condition. Seems I owe my safe return to you. That calls for thanks. Thanks. Jeff, I'll say it for him, the way it should be said. Thank you, Mr. Tollinger. And please accept my apology. <laughs> that went behind the ears. The kid was a pest turning me for a deputy's badge so he could go out and take on Holman single-handed. Don't mark him down. He's getting taller every day. Uh. I never thought I'd see the day. We got Castle back, that's all. Maybe I lost more than a day. I've never even laid eyes on Holden. So far, it's cost him Jeff and four gun hands, but now he knows a lot about me. I've been insured in too long already. I'm staying till you tell me everything I want to know. Why did you leave Beth? To earn a living, Clint. 
call me a businesswoman, and I am. Just that. Only that. You left me because you couldn't stand the kind of life I gave you. Is this better? Yes. Better than being married to a gunfighter. That's what I am, Nellie. Guns are all I know about. There are only two ways to use them. And the way you used them wasn't murder because you wore a badge. I don't know. I only know it didn't make the waiting any easier. I thought you loved me at first. I thought you might love Beth enough to... But you learned to hate so early that you never learned anything else. Guns are all you know about. They're all you care about. Still paying me back. For what? For something you can't help? You forget, Clint. I know that your father died because he wouldn't own a gun. You'll die because you do. Maybe a short life, but it'll be a full one. Plenty of exercise for your guns and all the women you want. Even nice ones. That's for my full life and all the women I want. Where does that leave the Atkins girl? Stella. I've seen her. I've heard about her. Every day falling a little more out of love with her young man and more in love with you. She reminds me of you, or as you used to be. Even down to hating this business. You're a little older now, too. Maybe she could persuade you to do what I couldn't. Maybe. Clint, I wasn't telling the truth. I didn't have the courage before, but now I don't care. Beth is dead. That first winter up north was so cold. She got sick. We did everything. It didn't help. Clint! Hey, what's up? Cleaning out the palace. Alone? Are you crazy? every night and Tollinger's still around. It will not be long now. Things would pick up right after the party for Tollinger. Party? A farewell party? trying this time. You are armed, I am not. But I am warning you, Mr. Tollinger. You're leaving tonight. The only choice you have is which way. I am staying. All right, let's go. You're overdue anyway.
Keep it coming! Keep that water on coming! How did it start? I started it. You started it? What are you trying to do? Burn us all out? What's on your mind? The fire. Well, at least it took Lasko out of our lives for good. But the way he did it. Remember the fire he told us about once? The man who died in it because he didn't have a gun? Yeah. Where's Jeff today? I don't know. Anything wrong between you two? Nothing he's willing to talk about. Anyway, it's hard to get anything out of him since... Good morning. Anything I can do for you? Why, yes, sir, you can. I'd like to hire a horse. How long? Oh, three, four hours. I sell whiskey, sir. That's all I've heard. Never touch it myself. I get my intoxication just riding around this glorious western countryside of yours. Corral's in the back. Make it a spirited animal. I want to feel the wind in my face. A spirited animal, sir. You know what we're here for. So you're making the rounds. Last on the list, huh? Last but not least. We weren't aiming to bypass you, Saul. We want time at the council meeting. You'll get time. Won't take long because we got the votes. The palace is gone and maybe that's all of the good. Now we've got to keep Holman off our backs and the only way to do that is to get rid of Tollinger. When it comes to destroying property, he stepped on more toes than Dave. Can't afford to let him run hog wild again. Where do you stand, Saul? I don't know. Just curious. We can swing this with or without you. How can you get rid of him? Just like that. So far, he's done exactly what you hired him to do. You put up the money. He put up his life. He may have a reason for what he did that we don't even know about yet. Reason? For turning thousands of dollars worth of good lumber into a pile of ashes? Oh, it's the lumber that worries you. And you wouldn't want to get rid of him just so you could hang out a business as usual sign. So that you can pick up the trade the palace can't handle anymore? And you wouldn't be so crazy to keep Tollinger around because you got your cap set for him, now would you? That's enough, Verge. And a good morning to you, gentlemen. Trouble on my account? They told me they have enough votes to take you off the job at the council meeting this afternoon. That's just about on schedule as my jobs go. But I think that's something Holman will want to take care of himself. Especially if he knows the town is ready and willing. A little wind last night. That fire could have touched off the town. It didn't. Fire might smoke Holman out. If it does, I'll be here. Don't matter how the council votes. I'll see you get full pay for the job. I'll finish what I started, or it'll finish me. Don't matter how the vote goes? No. That's the way it works. The town doesn't know what Holman does. Town hires a man to fight its war. They find out he's fighting because he's got an itchy trigger finger that ain't under control and never will be. They get scared. They got a right to do something about it. Well, it'll be over soon. If it ends your way, then what happens? To you. <laughs> You'll have no trouble getting rid of me. I'll shake the dust of this town fast. 
Your uh, young man rode out of town again today. I just came by to tell you that this time I can't do a thing about it. If you get him back, let him know you want him back. Before that trigger temper he's working up saddles him for good. When is it due? 4.45, and you're lucky to get a seat. I'll send for the luggage. Billy? Billy! Leaving today? No, but soon. This is for someone luckier than I am. You're staying? Mm-hmm. Of course. A target right to the end. Standing in front of people who won't stand back of you. Home will collect for the palace. I'm staying for that. Yes, it was your fire. Aren't you even now? I'm getting out of business soon, if that answers your question. You've killed Holmans in every town you've taken on. And you're staying here for the kill, too. You won't get out of business until they put you out of business. And don't try to change now, Clint. Or you'll find that even feeling a little can hurt a lot. Yeah, I... I found that out last night. You've been living three years with what I found out. Leave today. You've never met Dade Holman, have you? I have once. He's a fat man, but he's as hard as you are. And he might even be smarter. Miss. Fine horse, fine ride. One dollar, please. Dollar, hmm? Where's Pa? Gone to council meeting. Ah, yes, Friday. Town always seems deserted on meeting day, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I got my dollar's worth, all right. Hurry, Kitty. Lucky Kitty. She's going to visit her family. I don't call that fun. My family reads me like a book. What's the matter? Don't they like dime novels? Kitty will join us when we locate somewhere. Nellie said we should be hearing soon. Hope it's soon. Town gives me the shivers. We just sit around waiting for the same thing everyone else is waiting for. What? For Mr. Tollinger to get killed. Oh, I wouldn't like that. I mean, there are so many ugly ones to spare. Well, just the same. Before the palace burned down, I heard someone talking about a surprise party for him. Well, Mr. Tollinger surprised them instead. Good afternoon, ma'am. What is it? I'm a drummer, ma'am. Ladies wear? Miss Wakefield, Miss Anne Wakefield, I believe, ordered a bangle from St. Louis. That would be Miss Wakefield. Anne, someone to see you. On the porch. Oh, the porch, of course. By all means, the porch. It was picked up an hour ago. Come along, we're going to leave without you. Bye, girls. Bye. Bye. Bye, Kitty. Oh, it's simply beautiful. Show the rest of you ladies anything? Be glad to wait. Don't bother. Stay on the porch, Anne. Bye, Kitty. Bye. Now, you're sure you uh, won't forget the time? Oh, no. Five minutes before five o'clock. Oh, I won't forget. Now, he's very punctual. Remember, not a word to anyone. It's a job, you understand. He must be above reproach. Oh, I won't tell a soul. But that's the part that I... Well, I mean, Trotter's Bar is so public. Outside Trotter's Bar. A chance encounter on the street. That's what makes it look so natural. <sighs> then the handkerchief. The signal that you're not offended with his gift. Offended? Oh, couldn't he tell by just the way I looked at him? Well, he couldn't be sure. This is his way of being sure. Once he knows, well, he'll have no further need for an intermediary. A what? He'll uh, speak for himself. Uh. Remember, five minutes to five o'clock. Oh, how can I wait that long now that I know? 
Miss Wakefield. We're talking about minutes, not hours. Well, what would I do with myself? Oh, I know. I'll put on my hat. Excellent. Oh, be careful of the hat box. It's borrowed. I'll write to you, Kitty, as soon as anything's definite. Here's your ticket. I'll send you soon. Ladies? Well, look who's here. Deserting a sinking ship, Cal? Nothing here for me. This is one gone, Tallinger tamed town, and I'm heading back to New Orleans. Anne! Just getting some fresh air, Nellie. It's so hot today. Well, catch your breath, Anne, and then go on back to the house. I don't want you in the streets today. Oh, it's worse inside. I'll be home soon, Nellie. Well, bon voyage, Kitty. Anne, try and resist the Emporium today, hmm? You know, you're out of a job, and, uh, that bracelet looks pretty expensive. Bracelet? Oh, yes, it's lovely, isn't it? Emporium, I wouldn't dream of it. Well, bye, Kitty. Bye, Cal. Goodbye, Anne. Goodbye, Miss Nellie. Goodbye, Cal. Goodbye, Mr. Zender. Zender? Dave Holman's lawyer, man. I guess he's checking on what's left of the palace. Aboard. Aboard and rolling. Cal? Are you sure he's working for Holman? Sure, I'm sure. Lesko sent me out to the lazy tombstone with some papers for him to look over. See you soon, Nellie. Goodbye, Kitty. He ain't in, ma'am. Been out all afternoon. What is his room number? Key's here, so he's out. here. I haven't seen her today. Well, if you do, will you tell her I want to see her immediately at home? Well, certainly. Oh, thanks. You know, I swore I wouldn't buy any more clothes, and I really shouldn't, you know, but I'll take it. No trouble at all. You're a regular customer. Miss Atkins. I know you by name, at least, and I think you know who I am. Yes. Have you seen Clint Tollinger this afternoon? No. Why should you ask me? Miss Atkins, I have reason to believe a trap has been set for him. I don't know what kind, but I'm sure it's a very clever one. If it's true, why do you care? I care, Miss Atkins. Enough to try and warn him, even if you won't. I haven't seen him since this morning. But I could warn the council. They're meeting now about the same thing, how to get rid of him. That's why Holman picked this afternoon. Don't waste time with the council. When these things happen, they happen fast. I know. But my father wants right to know. now. You can help most by staying here to watch for Clint to warn him. Do you know Anne Wakefield? By sight. Well, she may be part of it. If you see her, keep her with you off the streets till I get back. made it, but somebody saw me. Chot missed me, but scared my horse. I was thrown. You've got to lie down. But no one came after me, do you hear? 
They didn't even bother to chase after me because Holman's up to something. Stop. All I care about is that you'll bleed to death if I don't get help. Everyone's at the council meeting. You'll be all right. carry a package home today. I'll pick it up tomorrow. Oh, I've got to hurry. Mind, Challenger. Then take him, Jeff. Take him. I didn't know. Oh, Nellie, I didn't know. Clip. Clip. Too long in one time, Nellie. Brandy. We got him. Thanks. Nellie, there's nothing old doctors know about gunshot wounds. All right, Doc. Never thought I'd prove it on you. Time to quit this business now. Gotta be an easier way to make a living. We'll find it. 